So I thought to myself this morning, um, I, I'm not an awards guy, but if I did my top 10 NBA players, the seasons they've had this year, not overall. I mean, LeBron's greater than any player in the last 10 years, right? And then it's Kobe and then it's, but what are the 10 best years in the NBA? 10 best players right now, the years they have had. And I'm going to, so it's kind of my MVP race. My top, if I was going to vote for the MVP and I had 10 votes, here's where I'd vote. Ready to go? Number one, Paul George. Paul George. Uh, first of all, he's at career high for him, and he's playing with Westbrook. This needs to be noted. He's playing with ball-centric Russ Westbrook, and yet Paul George, career high in points, assists, rebounds, and steals. He is shooting over 42% from three. Holy Lord, that's good. Uh, his plus minus is almost plus 10 a game. Second in the NBA in scoring. And by the way, when Paul scores big over 30, they're 21 and four. He is not one of these guys that when he goes off, the team is less of a team. No, Paul is scoring over 30 or more. They're 21 and four. He is now second in. Uh, leads the NBA in steals. He is the best two-way player in the NBA and had not missed any games until recently had an injury. Okay, so he has had an he is the best player. He's my MVP of the league right now. Number two is Giannis, who okay, I get it. Everybody loves Giannis. He's missed five games. The Bucs have a winning record when he's missed five games. Oh, by the way, his Bucs are just as good when he's not on the floor. I looked it up. 7.7. Now, I'm not saying he's not great. He's a remarkable rebounder. Longest player in the league. Leads the Bucs in virtually everything. Bucks have the best record in the NBA. He's going to win the MVP. But I always go to that plus-minus thing. He's on the floor. They're not on the floor. He, they're like 7.7. So I don't think he matters. I'm not saying he doesn't matter a ton. Paul George, to me, having to play with Westbrook, and doing what he's doing and shooting well into the 40% range for three-pointers, Giannis is my second best player. You know, we're forgetting Kevin Durant's amazing. You know, Kevin's had an amazing year. His best assist year ever. Um, do I think he coasts a little more defensively than Paul George? I do. Uh, but he's only missed one game this year. He's averaging almost 28 a game. Uh, the Warriors do have the best record in the West. He is their best overall player. Career high in assists. Uh, I can't put him over Paul George this year because I think Paul's giving me a more intense, passionate, defensive effort. And I think Paul's had to play with a tougher teammate in Russell Westbrook. But Kevin Durant, I'd put number three. I'd put Steph Curry. Again, because of James Harden, we're not paying attention to Steph Curry, who, by the way, is third in the NBA, averaging 28 and a half a game. Now, I dock him because he has missed 11 games. But this is where I give him credit. When Kevin Durant misses games, and he's only missed one this year, they have a winning record. The Warriors, the reigning dynasty, are under 500 in the 11 games Steph Curry has missed. He is just off points, assists. He is just below his unanimous MVP year. Once again, because he's not loud and dramatic, and he's not a drama king. We don't pay attention. Steph Curry is having an unbelievable NBA season. James Harden. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I do think Curry's defense, he at least gives me a better effort consistently than James Harden. Uh, also, when Harden goes into, I'm just going to take over the game and not pass, the Rockets are 11 and 11. Uh, he's had to deal with some injuries, um, but I really believe, and I'll say it again, Steph Curry, if I started a franchise tomorrow, Steph and James Harden, I'm taking Steph Curry. Plays well with others, best shooter of my lifetime, incredibly efficient, can play with multiple stars, unbelievably coachable, best ball handler since Isaiah Thomas. Harden would be my fifth best player, my fifth MVP, uh, MVP choice. Joel Embiid's having a monster year. Uh, you know, listen, uh, first couple of years couldn't play. 
He's really into the social media stuff, but he's top five in scoring, second in rebounding, career highs and everything. Unlike Ben Simmons, his game's getting better. Uh, ben Simmons has been a real disappointment for me this year. Apparently, he spent the offseason hanging out with his girlfriend because he can't shoot any better than last year, and it's his big flaw. Uh, Joel Embiid's had a monster year. Now, he has missed nine games, um, but when he misses, despite all their talent, they're sub-500 when he's out. That shows you the impact of Joel Embiid. I'd make him six. Denver Nuggets on the show. Nikola <laughs> Jokic leads the Nuggets in everything. Nugget fans, here you go. Second best record in the West. Um, he's a great passing, great passing big. Uh, when he has nine plus assists, they're 22 and three. He plays every night, only miss one game. Uh, and the Denver Nuggets deserve something on this show. Uh, Jokic, uh, if you look at all the numbers, how much value to the team, how many things he does well, his availability, I have him seven. Kawhi Leonard. Uh, listen, they're a better team than last year, and last year they were the number one seed in the East. So he has made them better. He's the second-best two-way player in the NBA. He's actually having a great year, career high in points, career high in rebounds. Uh, the big knock on him, and I think it's fair, is he's falling into this load management crap. He's missed 18 games this year. And by the way, the Raptors are 13-5 and five without him. I do think he is the second best two-way player in the NBA, though, and that to me has tremendous value. I don't think there's a lot of elite two-way players. Klay Thompson is, Kawhi Leonard is, Paul George is the best, LeBron used to be. LeBron James, he's not having a terrible year. Uh, by the way, the Lakers are still 24 and 22 when LeBron plays. He's averaging 27 a game, uh, eight and a half rebounds, eight assists, and... When he's on the floor, the Lakers are plus 6'9 better. 6.9 points better. I, I know we're going to bury LeBron this year. He is not close to being defensively the same player. Some of that's the injury. Came back and he's not in shape. But I'd say he's having the ninth best year in the NBA. Damian Lillard. Uh, again, this guy just comes every night. He's missed only one game. Uh, he's not a very good defensive player. I mean, he's really not a two-way player. He's a, he's a gifted offensive player. Uh, he is really, it was funny when he came into the league, we all knew he was talented, but I'm like, you know, he had kind of a quirky looking shot. He's shooting 47% this year. That's, that's a tremendous number in the NBA. He is a 47% from the floor guy and the Blazers now have added Rodney Hood and Enos Kanter. This may be a team capable of winning a couple playoff series. They are currently tied for third in the West. And so there you go. Paul George. To Giannis, to Kevin Durant, to Curry, Harden, Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, Kawhi Leonard, LeBron James, Damian Lillard are my top 10. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.